Hey Scrappers, welcome to another video. Today's video we will be taking apart this um, Toshiba DP2520 not sure if you guys can see that uh, photocopying machine. And Jane's here again. Hi. To help us out. So let's make a start. Right, just push that along. It should. You got it? Wasps nest in there? Very nice. So that's where all the So we have some, some nice step up motor so far. This would be some good copper in there. It's a bit of a circuit board, nothing is spectacular. Nothing? Yes it is. Sorry guys, welcome back. We just had to stop to do a bit of pest control. As you saw earlier, there was a wasp's nest in there. And then just before there was a wasp um, nest in here with an actual live wasp. So we had to stop and um, just exterminate it quickly. So we can continue now. Ah, uh, yeah, please. Big one? Uh, try that.
Um, can I have your hand replies, please? Thank you. Connect all of these. So there, progress guys, getting there slowly but surely. goodness there guys we got some RAM there I would say that these are mid-grade boards please correct me someone if I'm wrong gold corner BGA so yeah I would say these would be mid-grade because there's not a lot of external you know like inductors and you know, your own capacitors and stuff but there's not a heck of a like there is on low-grade boards like say for example that I would assume is a low grade board because it's got all the external stuff on it rather than as you can see above it all the chips and whatnot. But yeah, so you've got some actually, so there you go. So there's the difference between a step up motor or a stepper motor, I should say, and a normal DC motor is that you can vary the voltage through the wind through the windings here, whereas this is a constant speed you apply. Say I would say, you know, for a ballpark figure, let's say 12 volts to this, and it will spin at a constant rate. Whereas you can vary the voltage to this to drive certain things like your pickup for your paper and that sort of thing. And then just down here is your standard DC motors. So I'm I'm surprised there's not a, a bit more of um, the stepper motors on this. Unfortunately, I thought there would have been. But we shall see, it's only early days. That might even be a hard drive back there too, as you can see. I'm not sure if it can, but there's a hard drive back there, I think. So we'll continue with this. Don't worry, Jim. We can take the ladder.
So as I was saying before, I would say that, that would be a low grade board. As you can see, everything's above it rather than in a chip form on it. Um, but here in New Zealand, it's all the same price. So it doesn't really make a difference. Like if we were in Australia or the United States, you get um, priced better depending on the quality of the board. It doesn't apply here in New Zealand, unfortunately. So it all just goes into the um, same bucket. But first we'll strip off all those transformers and the inductors and remove some of that copper and those aluminium heat sinks.
Oke mungkin. Just chop that in half, Jim. You can stick paper, storage, the rest is just plastic. Okay. And my spider. There you go, guys. Didn't take that long to take it all apart. So, what we'll do next is we will do a bit of a cleanup quickly and then we will start taking all the other pieces to pieces. Components. So stay tuned. We'll be back. Hey scrappers, welcome back. So we're finished taking apart the main body of the um, yeah. photocopier. And now we're just going to do a few bits and pieces to further break it down and then we'll see what we can find what we can get. <coughs> For example, like these motors here. If you want they contain copper, as do all motors, ironically. Like this? Well, sorry, not all motors. Some of them have aluminium in them. But these ones are predominantly copper. And it is quite simple to strip them out once you've broken off this um, drive wheel. You pretty much pop that off the back there. And there you go. That's steel. This is nice number one copper but unfortunately it's not of a, of a third it's not of a certain thickness so it's considered here in New Zealand number two copper even though it's nice and shiny as you can see it so I think the threshold is 1.6 mil so like your appliance wire and that sort of thing your fridges freezers washing machines so on and so forth how did you get that out so easily? I was using a screwdriver. Oh. And then I broke that off. I broke that off first. Essentially all you need is a sharp pair of flush cutters. <clears throat> like so. Onto there. And done. Cut through it. Fold it back. And it should just all push itself out nicely. Like that. That way you don't waste time doing it the way Jane's doing it. If you're in a hurry. But I'm having fun watching it on white. So, and here's another one here. So if we push it out like that, there you go, nice. And then we do exactly the same. <clears throat> Chop through the middle. And then again, if you can, if it's not too thick plastic, off it's brittle plastic and well, then we just grab it again and voila I'm trying not to waste it all of course
So the reason I popped this um, top off here, guys, is because I'm pretty certain that that's copper. Can I have a rack here? <coughs> So as you can see through there, it's copper. So I can go in the copper bin. I won't worry about those gold fingers there. They're only very lightly gold plated, so there's no point. This chip, though. Take a board file. Um, also, the, for those of you who are interested, these covers, these caps on the USB ports. Nine comes out of ten a brass. However, a trick for young players is that they look brass but when you take them off and stick a magnet to them sometimes they will be magnetic which is happens to me a lot a let down because you think you've got you know especially if you haven't been aware of this and you have been collecting it and all of a sudden you find out one day that some some of it is steel I can feel a, a very small pull on that as you can see too I hope see how the magnet lifts it up slightly so even though you can see where is the top of that that it's brass see, as you can see it's got a nice yellow tinge to it but it's only coated in brass, it's not actually brass. So there's a trick for young players. <coughs> so the rest can just go into, see sometimes it's not always brass either, sometimes it's copper coated. I think the same situation, the same story arises, we should say. Just need to be a bit of a a bit vigilant because the same thing can happen it can be copper coated and you think it's copper and it's not but in this case it is so there's a nice piece of copper so yeah if you guys are interested just to keep your wits about you right so we'll just chop this off To the chips and this can go into the circuit board pile.
Start me in, please. <coughs> Another one on a BGA. Just remove this battery. Look at the size of this. Hmm. Small, hmm. big, large. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but touch it in the other way. The thickness in the batteries. Quite incredible. So what we'll do on screen guys, is, as I said before, is we'll remove these transformers, these transformers, these heat sinks, these transformers, these inductors, sorry these inductors, not transformers, um, and those inductors too. I thought about, oh and there's a relay here, inside there. And I thought about removing some of these capacitors. I might remove this big, this big one. But other than that, the rest can still go straight into um, circuit boards. Same on this heat sink, these transformers, these transformers, and then the rest can go to circuit boards. And we'll continue doing that with the circuit boards off screen. I think it's another mid-grade board. Um, yes, yeah, there are not a lot of you know high-rise components on the board to make it a low-grade. So I'll put this aside and I'll put the other low-grade boards and take the bits and pieces off that I need, the, that I want. Gold in there, if you can see that, guys. But unfortunately, they, these don't pop off as easy as the um, BGAs do, so I'll have to do a bit of thinking off screen and see what I can come up with. And I'm not sure if the paint scraper or putty knife will suffice this time. lens. Some Mac Daddy hinges. 
Do you want to put your finger on the chain? No, I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah. There you have it guys, as you can see there's still plenty more to be taken apart, to be stripped back to, you know, nothing almost, or to, to the commodities, we just thought we'd get the interesting, well, the semi-interesting pieces out of the way. So after this guys, in the last video for a couple of weeks, as I have to go get some surgery done, so I hope that was a bit of fun for you all, thank you for tuning in, look after yourselves and I'll catch you all in the next one, cheers!